The Celtics have just dropped two major bonds on us today with the new announcement of a two-way signing and the other announcement of the Summer League roster finally being finalized. I know I'm excited, and I hope you guys are excited for this video of another video of Celtics Digest. I'm your host, Godfrey Simpri, and without further ado, let's get started. Man, me and Bruce are so happy for all the support you guys have been giving us recently. Trust me, it means the world to us, and we're so thankful to have a family like you guys. And if you're not part of the family yet, join. Subscribe to Celtics Digest for all your latest news, trades, everything about our, our Boston Celtics, bro. I'm so excited to get this started. Without further ado, let's get started. All right. J.D. Davison has signed a two-way contract. So now that's two out of the three two-way contracts that we're able to give out. Now, the Celtics have been heavily rumored to give out the third two-way contract to our second-round pick, Anton Watson. And we're going to be talking about him a little bit more in the video. But J.D. Davidson, just to keep it simple and keep the facts to the facts, he's a great G League player. He's super, super athletic. And he's been honestly steadily getting better as the year go, years go on. He's entering into his third year. He was, one of, he was the 51st pick three years ago. And he's just continuing to steadily improve. He's one of those players that early on in um, – in high school, honestly, he was a major player. A lot of people were talking about him. Slipped through the ranks when he was in college. And when he got drafted, a lot of people thought he was going to be able to crack the roster immediately. But, you know, a lot of things didn't go well. He's not the best shooter. He's been improving his shooting, but he's not the best shooter. And we're going to bring up the stats, some stats here. But these are his stats when he's playing for the Celtics, not playing for the main Celtics, you know, the G League affiliate team, where on the G League affiliate team, he does average over 20 plus points. And with this with this past year, he's played his best basketball, averaging 20 plus points and doing many, many things to help the, the main Celtics bring them to the finals where they had lost to the OKC G League team. Obviously, this man, he's super, super athletic. And one of those players that can really do a lot. I definitely think he has a spot maybe in the future in this league. I know he has a spot in the league. I don't know if it's with the Celtics. But I definitely think he's going to be one of those players that can contribute to an NBA team in the future. Now, the next thing that I want to talk about today. And I know that's why a lot of people are here. The Summer League roster is finally dropped. And there's a few su surprising names and there's a few names that you guys haven't heard of before. The first thing I want to talk about are the Celtics players that just got announced that are on the team. But we already expected them to be on the team. So it's not nothing crazy with our first round pick, Baylor Shireman, and our second round pick, Anton Watson. And a couple other players that are on the team that, you know, a lot of people thought they would probably be on the team. Jaden Springer, Jordan Walsh. And surprisingly, but not too surprisingly, Nemius Keita. Uh, Drew Peterson, the other player that we just, you know, former Celtic, uh, is on another two-way contract now. He's also on the team with a couple new rookies in Jalen House, who is the son of former Celtic Eddie House, and Tristan and Arara, and Aruna, and Inaruna, sorry, Inaruna. He went to Cleveland State and is from the Netherlands. Someone that was pretty good at Cleveland State. And he's a four. He fits the bill. 6'8 forward, 217 pounds. Someone that could definitely fit Missoula Ball in the future. And we have a couple other players who have NBA experience, but they're joining for the team to in hopes to get, you know, another spot with another NBA team. And those players are Tyler Cook, Ron Harper Jr., Jameis Ramsey, and Killian Talil. Those players have been on NBA teams before, but are probably going to be looking for another team in order to get to where they want to be. The uh, player I want to talk about the most, actually, is going to be Anton Watson. And it's because of this quote he had today that was really surprising to me. It's something that I really like to hear out of your rookie players. He's already talking about emulating the game of Al Horford. And I like this because they have the similar build and when I, Anton was at Gonzaga, he was really shooting well from deep. He was a 40% shooter from deep at Gonzaga, but he didn't take as many threes as, you know, teams would like to to draft him higher. So 
being able to have someone that can mentor him in Al Horford is going to be amazing for his game and particularly going to bring him into higher stages to elevate his game. As you know, second round picks, they don't tend to stay in the league for, for as long as, you know, players like J.D. Davidson making it for three years. But, you know, they don't have that ability to just be able to be signed onto a team like a, you know, number one overall pick that it's going to be able to still be drafted or picked up by teams, you know, year after year after year if they're not performing. So with Anton being able to just pick up and, you know, spread the wealth and get some knowledge from a player like Al Horford is going to be immense and grateful for his career in the future and in the long run. I definitely think he's a player that can surprise a lot of people coming into this summer league. And I'm super excited to watch it with you guys. You know, I think he's going to be someone that can blossom and be a great player for us possibly in the future. Um, another player that, you know, we're going to talk about today is uh, J- um, Jalen House and the son of Eddie House. You know, just many players that we've talked about today that just have signed, you know, that have just come out of nowhere and just, you know, got these contracts with the Celtics for the summer league in hopes to either get that last um, roster spot or somehow get that last two way spot. Um, he led New Mexico to the uh, Mountain West Tournament Championship game, he had a very strong regular season. On the older side, 23 years of age, he averaged around 16 points, 3.5 rebounds, 3.5 assists, while um, shooting 32% from deep, somewhere that he's probably going to have to improve on to get that spot in the NBA. Because we all know the NBA is a three-point driven league, and if you're not shooting the best from that, you're probably not going to get picked up, especially as a player like that. Um, The players that have had NBA experience before, but are going to be playing for the Celtics in hopes of getting another spot are players like Tyler Cook, who's played with the Cavaliers, the Denver Nuggets, the Pistons, the Nets, and the Bulls, appearing in 45 games over two seasons. He's a six foot eight center, obviously fits the bill of, you know, you, we, we're starting to understand what the bill is for the Celtics and what they kind of want out of their big men, but he's averaged 3.8 points and 3.3 rebounds in the NBA. He spent a lot of his time playing in the G League and internationally in Spain and Australia. Ron Harper Jr., he was on the Raptors for the past two years, uh, playing for their G League, the 905, and averaging, um, he appeared in only 10 games in the NBA, averaging two points in five minutes. Um, Jameis Ramsey, another player that came from the Raptors, uh, he was pretty much a better player than um, talking about Ron Harper, but he averaged 6.7 points, 3.1 rebounds, 1.1 assists in 17 minutes. Prior to this, he was a member of the Kings. And just knowing that the Raptors, you know, they weren't in a um, contending spot last year with the injury to Scotty, Scotty Barnes. Obviously, he came in and gave them some solid minutes in the time he was able to play. So he's now looking for another spot on the Celtics or maybe another team. As for Tilly, he's a French big man, but he played 54 times. For, the, for Memphis, averaging 3.2 points and 1.6 rebounds. He hasn't played in two years in the NBA. As you know, he's a French international big man. So it's going to be interesting to see what he's um, got from the game and if what he's going to be able to bring back and show to the league that if he's ready to play on another contract. I definitely think he's one of those players that could surprise. I'm super excited to see what he can bring to the table and you know, bringing up this next point of the summer league preview going to look up what I exactly want, what the summer league preview can look like for this year. And I'm thinking what I want to see, and I think that's what everyone else wants to see. I want to see Namias Keita really dominate on the boards and dominate in many, many ways. I definitely think he's one of those players that can definitely dominate and show the league what he's really capable of doing. I think he's the backup big of the future. He's still only he's still 24 years old, and he's one of those players that can definitely, he was showing it on the main Celtics, and he was showing it in the NBA when he was playing that he's a dominant, dominant, dominant force in the block. So I definitely think he has a chance to show us that he's capable of doing those things on a larger scale def- against playing those players that really want those positions in the NBA. Another player I want to see is getting my first eyes on Bay- um, Baylor Shireman in 
uh, Celtics jersey. I definitely want to see what he can bring to the table from his three-point shooting and from his shot creation in general, as well as his um, rebounding skills because he coming into the draft, he was a great rebounder, someone that could obviously get rebounds in many, many different ways. And the last person I want to see, as I mentioned earlier, is Anton Watson. Can he specifically be a future Al Horford replacement or not? As always, let me know in the comments what you guys think. I'm super excited for Summer League, and I know you guys are too. I'm going to just drop the schedule so you guys can look at it. We start on the 13th, then we go on the 5th, 17th, and 19th. And if we win those games, we possibly have a couple more. As always, this is Celtics Digest. I'm your host, Godfrey Simfrey, and have a great rest of your day. Thank you.